Hello, I'm Martin Delaney. Let's have a quick look at working with Live's browser. Let's start with an instrument rack. Load a device, load Simpler. Let's drop in three audio effects in the chain after that. Use Command or Control A for select all, and then use a context menu or Control Command G to group them. We can rename this rack. And then save it. So you just hit the file button there goes into the browser. It doesn't mean that we can't rename and save also the separate elements within the rack. They'll also go into their own appropriate slots in the browser. You can also drag browser items around into other folders or drag them onto the shortcut folder icons to take them to a new location. So let's load the device. We use a grain delay. Then we can either, or we could have, loaded one of these presets directly. But let's just play with this hot swap button. Now I can use the up and down arrows, and indeed the left and right arrows on the computer keyboard to navigate through my presets or even through devices. All I have to do is hit enter when I land on one that I want to use. Let's try some shortcuts now and bookmarks. We can use these folder icons to create shortcuts to our most commonly used folders. Navigate to the folder you want to mark by double clicking to open folders or using the parent folder icon at the top to move up a layer at a time. Then when you arrive at your destination, just leave it there. And as you click on and off the other folders, when you come back to that one, it will still be pointing where you left it. Sometimes you need more than three folders though, so you can also use the bookmark menu at the top here. Choose bookmark current folder. And there it is. Again, it's a very fast way of navigating around between your folders. Now let's load some elements from a previous live set into a new one. This is another handy browser thing. I can navigate to a previous live set. Then basically it behaves like a folder. I can open that up and then I can access my individual tracks and I can drag those in. And you can see it loads all of the clips and devices contained within that original track. Let's just delete that now. Because even better, I can navigate inside the original track and target individual clips. And you can see when I load that clip, it still loads the necessary devices that it's going to need to play that back. 